Well, we're headed to Cuts Unlimited. Uh, it's a barbershop in the West Bank of New Orleans. This is the, um, the men's um, meeting point, I say, of the week. Hey, so I'm Lorenzo Lewis from Little Rock, Arkansas, and I run an organization called The Confess Project. And what I do is then have a conversation with barbershops, and particularly men of color, about mental health awareness. Uh, I was born in, you know, in a prison. Throughout my youth, you know, I struggled a lot with identity. Um, I, I struggled with, you know, with depression, and I, I struggled with, with loneliness and, and feeling like that I was in this world alone um, and that I had to take on the weight of the world, as a lot of young men feel. And I grew up in a barbershop. Uh, my aunt had a barbershop. I, I can remember the interaction was always relaxed, and it was a comforting place. And remembering those times and thinking about when I started doing my advocacy work in mental health, how that could impa impact you know, people to, to use this space um, and be able to, um, to deliver a positive message. I can remember when I was in the third grade, so I was sitting in the back of the room and I was shedding tears as if I had buckets of tears that was falling on the desk. And as she said, son, why are you crying? And as I began to tell her that I lost my dad, what anybody else would naturally know that you should show some form of grief. But she said, toughen up. You a man, get through it. And as an eight-year-old child, to hear a teacher tell me that I was a man, that I must fight through that, that was hard. That story reflects what most men in our society go through. We lose someone, we have nobody to vent to. We see things on TV such as police brutality. We have to deal with it. We have no safe place. So that's why I'm here. Not only to tell my story, but as we will be able to have a relaxed conversation about mental health. Uh, storytelling is a good part of getting, getting that message started. You know, getting that message started, telling my journey um, to wellness and my journey of depression, but also even, um, you know, the, the showing a, a film, you know, and, and being able to create dialogue after that film and, and making sure that it's, it's, it's stuff that, you know, that we watch as, as a culture, like The Breakfast Club. Clean, she don't want to hang out with you. And y'all women try to act like, oh, y'all going to be there for us, y'all going to be there for us. And when that money gets funny, you get tired of hearing our story quit. Very provoking video, right? Yeah, yeah. Um, I, can, I put myself in that video several times. I can remember going through different struggles the way with the, even with a woman or even with my own self, right? Feeling that this society had me trapped, that I couldn't live up to being the expectations of a man. So I want to hear from you. Now we have to understand just the actual psyche of a man. Like it's, it's like it's different. Like, like it's a man's job since the beginning of time and to protect. So if I'm coming to you, it's just so too much vulnerability to you because now you're looking at me like, damn, I'm going to be the stretch. So now as I'm coming to you with a problem when you always have seen me for years and months of time as being the strong, like you see me weak, that could possibly, you know what I'm saying, that could possibly mess up the whole house in general. You can't have help if you don't go to the help. The help is not gonna come to you. So we could talk about mental health all day long, but if men are so strong and they're so willed and they don't want to go to the help because it's an embarrassment to themselves, then they're never going to get the help. When, when a man is there, it's more of a pride issue, so they're going to try to take that and confine that within themselves and just find a way to try to, to it handle out. it and try to figure it out. You have to go to God, so why can't you go to, go to the meetings or, or go to your significant other or talk to someone, a friend? Good conversation, real good conversation. But I want to interject right there to, at that because that brings me to the understanding that men we face or we have these identity types, right? And I identify this in the Confess Project as men have the protector syndrome, the syndrome of being the priest, and the syndrome of being the provider. We understand that when this demographic so, is struggling, and data shows that, that we're not, you know, um, seeking treatment or, you know, reflecting terms of trauma, um, that we need, we need professionals, we need more resources. And I can say that by myself going to therapy, I began to win in life. I began to win in life because of the importance of me pouring out, having that time 
that one-to-one -one moment with someone has brought me incredible results. I have literally turned my weaknesses into streams. I've learned a lot just by sitting here and listening. Right. I usually talk a lot, as y'all can probably tell, I'm talking a bit. But I listen the whole lot. So my, my biggest thing is I want to make sure that, you know, I'm proactive and we all become proactive, meaning moving before something goes wrong. Because I think that's that's another uh, mental ailment I think we have is, you know, um, um, not necessarily being proactive and not doing things before, you know, we wait until we wait till somebody be killing you. No, I want my flowers now. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Let me know you love me now. So to walk in and, and to you know experience this and to interact and to be engaged, this has definitely been a blessing for sure. So if you're gonna have more conversations like this, yes. <laughs> make sure I be here. One reason that I brought this conversation to the barbershop is because I know that it can really hit our community directly. Um, it ain't taking no short shots. The school is okay, the colleges are fine, but this is the core. This is how we really get stuff out. When I was 25, uh, I was shot six times in my abdomen at a Mardi Gras parade. I struggle a lot, literally every day, with my PTSD. Um, and because of that, it's kind of hard to be so social as I used to be. Here in this shop, what we try to do is open everyone's welcome arms. You know, as I say, show them all the love that we show one another on a daily basis. Um, and kind of just make you feel at home, you know? Make you want to just go out and smile and say, hey, I had a good day in that shop. I walked in with a bad day and came out and my heart was one. That's what we do here. Um, that's what my brother has been doing for me for years. He gives me that extra push every single day. It's not one day he feel like he want to give up on me or he feel like I'm giving up on myself. Even though sometimes I always say, I feel like a failure. He made me realize failure is good. Cause he always say, failure is good, you know? As long as you keep pushing out there and you're, and you're doing everything that you have to do for yourself, failure is great. Cause how can you win without failing? Right, that's what I'm saying. I had no answer either. <laughs> Today's conversations actually is gonna start the process, not just in the barbershop for, for me and, and my friends and, and people that I know and love, um, but I think outside the barbershop, we're gonna talk more about mental health issues and actually talk more about how to get help, you know, and where do we go to get our help from. So in my opinion, I think today is gonna definitely actually open the doors for not just me, but I think other people just to start the communication process on mental health issues. The barbershop is one of the places that I find my strength. You know, thinking about a kid being born in, in behind prison walls um, at 17 years old, almost um, becoming part of, you know, the prison pipeline system, um, you know, going through losing both parents. Um, I, I feel that I was not only destined, but that I knew that Others can do the same, you know, because this reflects a lot of stories with young men, especially young men of color, and it, to hope that my story can be used as a, as a story of hope, to, to show that it's possible and that it can be done.